Hello everyone, and today we have quite the interesting different video for you guys today. Now, as we all know, Super Bowl 58 is right around the corner. By right around the corner, I mean literally tomorrow. Um, so, it's time to get in the mood here. Today, we are going to be looking at the name origins of every single team in the National Football League. Now, there are 32 teams in total, and I, I want to try to avoid this video from being too long, so I'm going to go through these pretty um, quickly for the most part. Um, we're going to be going through the name origins of every single team. Now, some of these are actually pretty interesting and clever, and some of them, uh, not so much. So, we're just going to roll with this. I'm going to go down in order by division, and we're going to go through all 32 teams in the National Football League and we're going to discuss how they all got their names. And some of them, like I said, are pretty fascinating. And some are just like, what? So we're going to find out. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, we're going to be starting off here, starting with the AFC North. So first of all, we are heading to Baltimore with the Baltimore Ravens. Now, the Baltimore Ravens are... They almost made it to the Super Bowl. They, they lost uh, the AFC uh, championship this year. But besides that, the Baltimore Ravens are a relatively new team. But their team name origin is definitely not new. You see, the Ravens actually got their name, was inspired by the famous um, poet and author of short stories in the early 1800s, Edgar Allan Poe, who wrote many short stories and poems in the early 1800s. Now, I am not the biggest fan of Edgar Allan Poe. I actually hate Edgar Allan Poe. His books were dark and they sucked but uh, other than that, his most famous book that we've probably all heard of, The Raven. Now, you're probably thinking, what connection does Edgar Allan Poe have to the Baltimore? Well, Edgar Allan Poe was a, was a native to Maryland, and he actually, in 1849, when he died, they found him famously dead on the streets of Baltimore because he got drunk after a party at some point uh, the night before. And they found him dead on the streets of Baltimore in 1849. And um, The Raven was written in 1845, just four years after he, uh, four years before he died. But Poe was never famous during his life. Uh, he only became famous after he died. And he was pretty poor for the most, most of his life. But he was found dead on the streets of Baltimore. So Baltimore has a big connection to Edgar Allan Poe. Um, and so that is why they chose their team name to be Ravens. So that's the Baltimore Ravens. Moving on to the second team in the AFC North. We're heading over to Ohio into Cincinnati, the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, the Cincinnati Bengals, as you can see, I'm wearing my dad's Joe Burrow jersey. Uh, this is this is not mine, uh, if you were wondering. Um, but yeah, the Bengals are a little bit harder to figure out the name because I don't know if you've ever been to Cincinnati before, but there are not just Bengal Tigers roaming the streets of Cincinnati. Um, the team was founded by Ohio legend Paul Brown, who founded both not only the Bengals, but the Cleveland Browns as well, which we'll get to here in a second. Um, but the Cincinnati Bengals origi originate from, there was a mini league uh, team who played from 1937 to 1942, only about five seasons. They were called the Bengals, um, although the actual NFL team is not this team. The, their actual NFL team was created by Paul Brown in 1968. The original Bengals were a mini league who played in the late 1930s, early 40s in Cincinnati, and they were called the Bengals. Now, how they got that name is a little bit interesting, and the story seems a little bit stretched, but I'm going to tell it anyway. Basically, the original coach, um, his name was Hal Pennington, um, and he was deciding what he should name his team, his local team. Um, and so people on the team brought up the name The Elephants and such others that he didn't really like. And so he went home one night and was pondering the, what the name of this little league team should be. And he stared at his mom's, he was in his mom's house, he stared at his mom's bangle stove and that gave him a light bulb to call the team the Bangles. Now, what is a bangle stove? I have no idea. But that is supposedly how the Bangles got their name. But Paul Brown named the team after that team. But the origin of that name is a uh, little, little weird. Anyways, moving up north, we have the Cleveland Browns. Rest in peace, Cleveland Browns. One of the four teams and one of the only teams, as old as it is, to never have a Super Bowl appearance. The Browns have time and time again um, kind of let 
Cleveland fans down. But anyway, um, the Browns were founded in 1946 by the man himself, Paul Brown. Now, Paul Brown, a little more about him. He originally was the coach of the Ohio State um, football team before he became the head coach, uh, first head coach of the Cleveland Browns. Um, so the, obviously named the team after Paul Brown because Paul Brown is kind of an Ohio legend. He's kind of a Midwest football legend. Um, but some like to argue that the name Browns actually came from their previous name was the Brown Bombers, supposedly, named after uh, then-boxer Joe Lewis, who was, called the, who was called Brown Bomber, but I don't think that is really accurate. I'm pretty sure the team was probably named after Paul Brown, but it was founded in 1946, making it one of the older teams in the league. Just one year after World War II, never made a Super Bowl appearance, sadly. And now for the last team in the AFC North, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers, which are actually even older than the Browns. Founded in 1933 by Arthur J. Rooney. Um, now, you, the Steelers, you can say whatever you want about them, but you got to admit they have probably one of the best names in the NFL. Um, now, the name Steelers comes from the city's origins. Now, for those of you guys that know your history, your industrial history, anything if you know anything about the Industrial Revolution, um, Pittsburgh is known for their steel. Pittsburgh had the highest supply of coal ore in the turn of the 20th century, uh, between 1875 and the 1950s, almost half of America's steel production came from Pittsburgh alone. And that is thanks to Andrew Carnegie, the steel tycoon. The Carnegie Steel Company was stationed in Pittsburgh. And people uh, of the city of Pittsburgh were known as Steelers because of the steel. Um, and Pittsburgh also holds the record of having the most steel bridges of any city 446 steel bridges in the city of Pittsburgh. I think a very clever name for the Pittsburgh Steelers and a very appropriate name for them. Moving on to the second division. Moving on to the AFC South. Um, starting with the Houston Texans, the newest team in the league, founded in 2002. Um, basically, the only reason the Texans were founded was because Houston was without a team for a couple years. Uh, Houston had previously been with the Houston Oilers um, for decades, up until about nine, or up until about nineteen seven uh, nineteen ninety seven, when the Houston Oilers decided to leave Houston and go up to Memphis, Tennessee. Now, the Houston Oilers and the Texans are not the same team. The Oilers are actually the Titans now, which we'll get to here in a second. So, Houston was without a team for about five years. So, in two thousand two. Uh, I think it was in 2000, the early 2000s, uh, people from Te um they gathered around to create their new uh, NFL team. And they called it the Texans because, very creatively, uh, people from Texas are called uh, Texans. So there is the origin of the Texans name. Um, anyway, moving on to Indianapolis Colts. Now, the Colts name is actually has nothing to do with Indianapolis at all, or Indiana, for that matter. Um, we're actually heading back to Maryland. It actually has its roots in Baltimore. Now, I mentioned the Ravens were a relatively new team because Baltimore had previously had the Colts. They were the Baltimore Colts for decades. Um, they were founded, they, sir, they, they played in Baltimore from 1953 to 1983. Um, and the team name and the logo, based on a horseshoe, comes from the Baltimore's history of horse breeding, um, which Baltimore is apparently pretty famous for that back in the day. Don't know much about that, but Robert Robert Irsay, the coach of the Colts at the time in 1983, moved the franchise to Indianapolis. Um, therefore, for about 13 years, Baltimore was without a team, and they created the Ravens. But the Colts played in Baltimore for about 30 years before they went to Indianapolis. That's why the Colts name has nothing to do with Indiana at all. Next up is the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, the Jacksonville Jaguars um, are also a pretty new team. 1995 is when they were founded. Now, there's no creative name on the Jaguars uh, at all. They just, uh, the city wanted to create a team. And so they didn't know what to name it. So basically what they did was they launched, they held a contest to pick a name of anything they wanted, and the Jaguar won. Now, unironically, just like just a fun fact here, um, 
the oldest, ironically, I don't know if this has anything to do with the name, it might, I, it probably doesn't, but the oldest living jaguar in the United States at the time in 1995 was actually held at the zoo in Jacksonville, Florida. Does that have any relevance with the Jacksonville Jaguars name? I have no idea, but it's interesting. It's just an interesting thing to think about. Um, so yeah, um, but the chant that the Jaguars fans always say is Duval. And for those of you guys that don't know where that comes from, Duval uh, is actually the county that Jacksonville, Florida is in. So it's Duval County chant is where that comes from. So that's the origin of their chant. But the team name literally contest Jaguars won. That was, that's all that was. Next up is the Tennessee Titans. Now, the Tennessee Titans have a pretty interesting history, and their names come from good stuff. Um, originally, the Tennessee Titans, as I previously said, were known as the Houston Oilers. Um, they were founded in Houston in 1960, and they played there between 1960 and 1997, um, before moving to Memphis and then finally Nashville. The Oilers came from... Um, uh, their founder, Bud Adams, who was an oilman uh, from Petroleum, um, so he decided to, uh, Petroleum, Oklahoma, uh, he was not actually from Houston, he was from Oklahoma, and he worked for an oil company, so he decided to name, he, he was an oiler for Petroleum at the time, um, so he decided to name his team the Oilers. However, the Oilers do not exist anymore, or at least their, their team still exists, but the name does not. Um, in 1997, they decided to move up to Memphis, Tennessee, so they were the Memphis Oilers for a little bit. Then the next, in 1997, they were in Memphis, and then the year after, 1998, they moved to Nashville, which they are today. And then in 1999, they changed their name from the Oilers to the Titans. And the way they got the Titans name is actually pretty cool. Um, now, if you know anything about Greek mythology, um... The Titan, a Titan is one of the most powerful figures and the most powerful beings in Greek mythology. Now, like, probably like, what does Greek mythology have anything to do with Nashville? Well, Nashville has been notoriously known for in history to be uh, Athens of the South. And so the Athens is the capital of Greece, of the ancient Greece. And so what a better name than the Titans for uh, the Tennessee Titans. So pretty cool name, I think. Very clever, very clever. Comes from Greek mythology. Next up is the AFC East, starting with the Buffalo Bills. Now, the Buffalo Bills, remember how I said some names don't make any sense at all? Well, here, here you go. The Buffalo Bills were founded in 1960, ironically, the same year as the Titans. However, the name literally comes from a guy um, named Buffalo Bill, who had nothing to do with Buffalo. Uh, his name was Frederick Cody, or William Frederick Cody. He lived from 1846 to 1917, and this guy was notorious in the Wild West. He was actually from Iowa. He was notorious in the Wild West for killing a bunch of bison, and so he gained the name Buffalo Bill. Now, the, the whole reason that the name Buffalo Bills is for the city of Buffalo is because the city is called Buffalo, and Buffalo Bill sounded good. So that's why they chose that name. Buffalo Bill has nothing to do with any of the heritage in Buffalo or any of the heritage in New York, state or upstate New York. It's literally named after a guy who killed bison. And the city's called Buffalo. So that is why they're called the Buffalo Bills. Okay, I have some sympathy for the Buffalo Bills. You know, they lost four Super Bowls in a row, never won. You know, I'm sorry, but like you're... you're your team name really makes no sense. But I gotta, I gotta cut him some slack. It's kind of a good name. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. Anyways, moving on to the Miami Dolphins. Now, the Miami Dolphins, uh, founded in 1966 in Miami, and yet another name contest was actually held in Miami in 1965, and the name Dolphins came out victorious. Now, the Dolphins make a little bit more sense than something like the Jaguars, uh, because Miami's actually notorious for having a um, large population of bottlenose dolphins in the ocean near Miami, because it's an ocean city, basically. The dolphins' name makes sense. Moving up north to the New England Patriots, moving up to Boston. We have the New England Patriots, uh, founded in 1959 in Boston. Um, also, a name contest was held in 1959 to choose the name of the new team. Um, 
and Patriots won. But the, uh, what if you, for those of you guys that don't know what a Patriot is, I think this name makes sense for what Boston is. Because um, Boston was where the American Revolution started. You had the Boston Tea Party, the Boston Massacre, all took place in Boston. John Adams was from the Boston area. Benjamin Franklin was even born in Boston. So uh, the Patriots, what a Patriot is, is somebody who's loyal to their country. And it makes sense because the whole country was founded basically in Boston. So it just makes sense for the, um, the, the Revolutionary War kicked off in Boston. Just makes sense for their team to be called the Patriots. I mean, it, it, it's really a good name, I think. And finally, last team in the AFC East, we have the New York Jets. Now, the New York Jets were founded in 1960. Now, for those of you guys that don't know, New York has two teams. This is the, um, they have one of them. This is the AFC one. They have one in the NFC, one in the AFC, and so does Los Angeles. But that's besides the point. 1960, they're originally known as the New York Titans, uh, but they decided to change their uh, team name in 1963 when Sonny Werblin purchased the team. Three years later, they were only known as the Titans for about three years. <laughs> In 1963, Sonny Werblin bought the team. Werbley renamed the team to the Jets. Now, the reason the Jets were picked is kind of weird, but you just go, go with it here. The Jets were to play near the La Guardia Airport, okay? The original team stadium was supposed to be by the airport, so they called them the Jets. Now, that is probably an unlikely thing. That's why their name was called that, but most likely it was a combination of that and it rhymed with the MLB team, in the, uh, the baseball team in New York, the New York Mets. Uh, the Jets rhyme with the Mets. So that's probably why the Jets were called that. Now, I do need to mention that um, in 2001, after the 9-11 um, attacks um, in New York, there was a strong push, and even years later, to change the name from the Jets because New York Jets... I'll let you uh, you decide the rest. Uh, so yeah, it was kind of controversial, but I digress. It's still a decent name, I guess. The Jets really just uh, that, but really just doesn't make any sense. Every time I think of the New York Jets, I just think of Jets Pizza, and I don't know if that's a good thing or not. But okay, here we go. All right, now for the last team in the AFC, uh, last division in the AFC is the uh, the last division is the AFC West, starting with the Denver Broncos. Now. Broncos, okay? Another name contest, as you can tell by most of these animal names. Uh, name contest. 1959 held a name contest for the new team founded in 1960. Um, and a man named Ward M. Vinning uh, of Lakewood wrote a 25-word essay on the what and why the Broncos were the best name. And so they chose the Broncos to be the name of the team. All right, next up is the Kansas City Chiefs, AFC champions uh, for the 2024 season. Um, they're going to the Super Bowl here, uh, Kansas City Chiefs. Now, they were, the Chiefs were previously known as the Dallas Texans um, when they were founded in 1963, but they moved to uh, Kansas City in 1963, and so Mayor Roe Bartle was nicknamed Chief at the time, the mayor of Kansas City. Um, so they changed the name to the Chiefs, and that's supposedly why um, the mayor, but but it's not just like they just named it after the mayor for no reason. The mayor was actually influential in bringing the team to Kansas City. He pushed to get the team to Kansas City, um, and so since he was known as the Chief, he was known as Chief um, Lamar Hunt, who was the owner at the time, changed the name to the Chiefs, so it was Kansas City Chiefs. So there you go, Taylor Swift fans, that is where you go there. Las Vegas Raiders are up. Also founded in 1960. 1960 was when a lot of these teams were founded um, because that's when the, uh, the NFL started to get big. It was founded in 1920 in Canton, Ohio, but it took a while for it to actually get going. By the time we got into the 1960s, it was really pushing. Um, now, Las Vegas Raiders were known as the Oakland Raiders for a long time. Uh, they were established in Oakland, California. They moved to Los Angeles in the 1980s. They played there in the 1980s, 1990s. And then they moved back to Oakland, um, after the LA riots in the 1990s, moved to Oakland, and then in 2020, they moved to Las Vegas. Um, so a very recent change for them. Uh, they originally intended to be called the Oakland Seniors, but the reason they didn't call them the Seniors was because uh, the name got made fun of uh, a lot in Oakland. So they decided to change the name to something a little bit more fierce, the Raiders, um, which the pirate logo uh, signifies... 
uh, the actor Randolph Scott, who was the symbol of the club uh, at the time when the, the when most of these most of these old NFL teams started out as club teams, um, but the Oakland Raiders club um, symbol was Randolph Scott, and so they he was kind of like a pirate guy. So they the logo is pirate, and Raiders is a very fierce name. That's why they chose it. And now for the Los Angeles Chargers, who were founded in 1959, <clears throat> one of the two teams in Los Angeles today, although the Raiders used to be in Los Angeles for a little bit. The name was chosen by General General Manager Frank Lee. Uh, Lee uh, moved from San Diego. Uh, the, the, the Chargers were in San Diego um, from 1959 until 2017. They moved uh, in 2017 to Los Angeles. Uh, the coach enjoyed when they yelled, Charge! And they sounded the bugle at the beginning uh, at the Dodgers game, uh, which was the local team. So whenever they uh, played at the Dodgers game, they yelled charge and sounded the bugle. The That's why I named the team Chargers. Um, yeah, okay, these guys were on something, I think, when they were creating the names of these teams. But there you go. Really doesn't make any sense, but I guess it kind of does. Anyway, moving on to the... Second and final division. There's only two divisions. Uh, NFC North, we're moving on to the NFC North with the Chicago Bears. Now, the Chicago Bears are actually the oldest team in the NFL. Not the oldest team to be founded, but the oldest team, like what I mean, has been playing the longest. They were founded in 1919. Um, the first team to join the NFL, which still exists today. They were not the first team to join the NFL, but they were the first ones still there today. Uh, supposedly, the name branches from the baseball team, uh, famous the Chicago Cubs, so the Cubs, the Bears, I kind of see where that's coming from. I don't think they're just Bears in Chicago, so it's probably that. Um, but basically, the, the but what's funny is that the Cubs, notoriously, um, one of the, uh, they I think they hold the record still for being the longest drought in baseball history for not winning a World Series. Their first time they won a World Series was in 1908, and they didn't win another one until 2016, a 108-year drought. Uh, very, very notorious for that. Um, but yeah, that's that's how the Bears got their name uh, because they wanted to kind of coincide them with the the Cubs. So yeah, the Cubs for baseball and the Bears for the football. So that's how that that came up to be. Um, next up, the Detroit Lions. The Detroit Lions were founded in 1929. Also, they were so close to making their Super Bowl debut. Lots of the 49ers. Um, they didn't come back there at the end. But uh, George A. Richards founded the team, and they want he wanted the team name. He didn't know what he wanted to name the team, but he knew it wanted he wanted it to symbolize the king of the NFL, basically. So they went with the Lions because the Lions, obviously, king of the jungle. There's at least what it's known as. Um, they're the king of the animal kingdom, obviously, the Lions. So they chose the name to be Lions. Um, he also wanted to, you know, another baseball. Um, tie in with the city because Detroit Tigers were the baseball team. Uh, so it kind of just like the Bears wanted uh, to coincide along with the two most fearsome cats, Tigers and the Lions, also to be king of the NFL. Ironically, have never been to a Super Bowl. <laughs> so are they really king? I don't know. I feel bad for Detroit, but I love Detroit. Detroit Trilogy, baby! Let's go. Next up is the Green Bay Packers, which were also founded in 1919 just like the Bears, uh, Earl Lambeau and George Whitney founded, uh, George Whitney Calhoun founded the team in 1919. Um, so the, the way they got the Packers name is a little interesting. So Lambeau previously worked as a uniform solicitor uh, for a company called the Indian Packing Company. Um, I'm not sure if that was in Green Bay or not, but it was probably somewhere around there. And by the time he created the name, uh, team name, he wanted to name it the Packers because he was a Packer because he worked for the Indian Packing Company, which was like a packaging company uh, for, for football uniforms. Dude, it's kind of kind of like the Oilers, actually. The Oilers and Packers came from the same type of thing because their founder's previous profession was a, being a Packer for uniforms. Next up is the Minnesota Vikings. 1961 was when they were founded. Uh, Minnesota culture, um, this is one's pretty interesting. If you know anything about Minnesota culture, um, it is derived from uh, Scandinavia, which is Denmark, Norway, Sweden, Finland, those areas. Um, and during the Middle Ages, uh, Denmark was 
known for being ruled by the Danes, or uh, more commonly known as the Vikings today. Um, and they ruled Denmark, Norway, and Sweden for centuries um, during the early Middle Ages. Um, and they, it, the Vikings reflected the heritage of the city uh, or the state of Minnesota, because Minnesota um, and Minneapolis uh, came from a Scandinavian heritage. So they wanted to honor that by calling them the Vikings. I always love those historic names. They're just always nice. All right, to the NFC South. We went to the NFC South with the Atlanta Falcons, which were founded in 1966. Again, a contest was held in Atlanta. Um, and a school teacher from uh, Griffin, uh, Miss Julia Elliott, uh, was chosen as the winner of this. And she actually said that, the, uh, and I quote, the Falcon is proud and dignified with great courage to fight and it never drops its prey. It is deadly and has a great starting tradition. A great sporting tradition, end quote. So she was chosen with that good point to name the team the Falcons, 1966. So there's the Atlanta Falcons. Not too much else to say about them, honestly, but that's how they got their name. Next up is the Carolina Panthers, were founded in 1993. Now, obviously, Charlotte, uh, North Carolina, is not known for its Panthers, okay? Um, I'm pretty sure there's no Panthers living in North Carolina. Let me know in the comments if you uh, ever see a Panther um, in North Carolina, because I've, I've, I've been in North Carolina a couple times, several times, and I've never seen a Panther. But uh, the team actually comes from the team's president in 1993, was Jerry Richardson. He chose the Panther uh, because he believed that it was the best animal that coincided with his colors for the team, which were black, silver, and blue. He thought the Panther was the best uh, animal to portray those colors. So he went with Panthers for that. Next up is the New Orleans Saints. Now, this is one of my most favorite names, obviously, because, you know, I got a soft spot for the French monarchy. Actually, you know what? I'm putting on my crown. Now, for those of you guys who don't know, New Orleans comes from Orléans, okay? New Orleans was founded by the French back in the, a long time ago. And Louisiana, the state, is named after Louis XIV of France. And, um, therefore, the city of New Orleans is largely Catholic because France was strongly strongly catholic and there are wars over that in france and all that stuff um and the the team ironically was actually founded on all saints day uh, in 1967 november 1st i think it's all saints day um that's when they officially found the team it's not when it started but that's when they founded the team um the symbol is actually the fleur de lis which the fleur de lis is actually the the symbol of the french coat of arms is the fleur de lis um and so the saints also, St. Louis, St. Louis the Ninth was a saint, um, and it was founded on All Saints Day, and Louisiana comes from France, and they're Catholic, and it's the Fleur de Lis, which is the French coat of arms. It all comes back together, and that's why I love the saint's name. Amazing. Moving on to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. In 1974, 1975, Tampa held a contest. Choose the name of the team contest. It's, it's a good contest. Um, and this guy named Hugh Coleridge uh, chose the Buccaneers um, to a throwback to Tampa's, uh, well, obviously, to, to Tampa's history uh, of the Gastarillo invasion. So Tampa, Tampa Bay, Florida, back in the 1600s, 1700s, was constantly getting invaded by pirates. So the name Buccaneers actually came from something. It's not like it just came out of nowhere, but... It wasn't a contest to choose that name. But yeah, the Gasparilla invasion uh, was one of the worst ones that took place in Tampa. Um, and so that's why they chose the name Buccaneers. Next up, we have the NFC East with the Dallas Cowboys. Yeehaw, everyone. The team was originally known as the Dallas Steers. Um, <clears throat> in 1960, they had to change their name, though, to the Cowboys to avoid confusion with the baseball team which was the Dallas, Dallas Rangers. They were known as the Dallas Rangers, but their team, the, the baseball team was the Dallas Rangers, but their old team name was the Steers, which is really similar to Rangers. So they wanted to change the name to Cowboys, and I think they probably chose Cowboys because of Texas being um, pretty infamous for the Wild West and Cowboys, you know, kind of just makes sense. Uh, next up is the New York Giants. Now the New York Giants were founded in 1925. Remember I mentioned New York has two teams? 
Here's the other one, New York Giants. Um, now, they were named oh, to be alongside the Major League Baseball team, the New York Giants. There were two Giants, um, the New York Giants. In 1883 was the New York Giants were founded, um, which was the baseball team. Although the baseball Giants actually ended up moving to San Francisco in 1958. That's where they are today. Um, but the San Francisco Giants used to be the New York Giants. So you used to have New York Giants football and New York Giants baseball. But the baseball team moved to San Francisco. The football team is still in New York. Um, and the Giants name likely comes from the giant buildings of New York. And with New York just being population-wise and, inf um, and inspiration-wise for the country, influential, it's a giant. So, Next up is the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, they were founded in 1933. Um, kind of an interesting one that doesn't really make too much sense to me. But um, one of uh, Franklin Roosevelt's New Deal programs was the um, Blue Eagles program, which was part of the National Recovery Act that he passed in 1933, the year that uh, he took office as president. <clears throat> so it was called the Blue e Eagles. So the team was created during the Depression, and they called it the Eagles after that program because that program kind of allowed them to start. So pretty clever. Um, but also Philadelphia kind of has a history with the Eagles um, with the United States as the constitution was written there and things like that. And the Eagle is the American bird. Now, if I, I don't know about you and I don't know about Philadelphia, but if I was going to name the team, I would have called it the Philadelphia cheesesteaks, uh, the Philly cheesesteaks, but that's just me. Next up is these guys right here, the Washington Redskins. No, uh, they're not the Redskins anymore. The Commanders, the Washington Commanders, uh, were founded in 1932. Now they've gone through many names. They've gone through like four names. I think the Commanders have gone through more names than any other team. Um, they were originated in Boston. They were originally called the Boston Braves in 1932. Um, and then that was only for a year. But they changed their name to the Redskins in 1933. So they played in Boston before the Patriots existed. Changed their name to the Redskins to honor the Native, Amer honor the Native American culture in the United States um, as the Redskins. 1937, they decided to relocate the team to Washington, D.C., um, and then the and then the Redskins played there as the Redskins until 2020, when controversy came up with most people claiming that the name was racist or making fun of Native Americans. Although most Native Americans, I'm not trying to get politically talking here, but politically speaking here, but most Native Americans actually liked having a team representing them. And most people of Washington, D.C. liked the team. Most of their fans liked the name Redskins. And so in 2021, they were called the Washington football team, which uh, I'll let you decide how they came up with that team, with that name. That, that, was, that was a clever name. Um, and then in 2022, they changed their name to the Commanders. Now, the Commanders come from um, probably the, the capital's connection to the U.S. military, to the Commanders there. Um, 40,000 names were suggested uh, between 2020 and 2022 to figure out what the new name was going to be called. So in 2022 and 2023 seasons, they've been known as the Commanders. But there is still a push to this day to bring the Redskins name back. Um, but the Redskins weren't the only team to be hit with this. The Cleveland Indians uh, baseball team actually got hit with that. Now they're known as the Cleveland Guardians. So kind of how that came to be. But they're called the Commanders because of the Capitals tie to the military um, and the Redskins. Now I'm one of those people. I'm a Redskins fan. I wanted to bring back the name. I just think the Redskins was a good name. So, rest in peace. Now for the very last division, the NFC West. Um, starting with the Arizona Cardinals. Now, the Cardinals are actually the oldest team in the league. Um, by oldest team, I don't mean he, they've been in the, the NFL the longest. Uh, they, they haven't been in the NFL as long as the Bears. But they, they are the oldest team by, like, the team was founded. They used to be a club team, basically. Um, so in Chicago, um, they were created with the Morgan Athletic Club. They were known as the Morgan Athletic Club. Um, they were founded in Chicago way back in 1898 um, was when they were created. Uh, they were founded by Chris O'Brien, um, and he called the team Cardinals, and they renamed, renamed the team to Cardinals because um, in Chicago, when, he, when it was there, he got a shipment of packages of you got a shipment of jerseys um that he called cardinal red because they were red jerseys 
um, and he got a shipment of them in the 1940s, 1930s, whatever, or, or, and back during that time period. Called them Cardinal Red, so he changed the name to the Cardinals. Um, and when they were still in Chicago, um, they actually combined with the Steelers for one season, the 1944-1945 season during World War II. Um, they combined with the Steelers one year, um, and then they moved them to St. Louis. And then um, in 1999, they moved the team to Phoenix, and as we know them today, is the Arizona Cardinals. Moving on to the Los Angeles Rams, um, were founded in 1936 um, by Daman Damar Buzz. This guy named Buzz. He named the team after his favorite college team, uh, the Fordham Rams. Um, so he, he liked the Fordham Rams, so he named the team after them. But it was founded in 1936. There were still college teams back in the back in the 1930s that played. So he liked the Fordham Rams, so he called his team the Rams. The other team in LA, in Los Angeles. You have the Chargers and the Rams today. Next up is the NFC champions going to the Super Bowl, the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, the Niners, baby. Uh, 49ers. So uh, the, the 49ers name comes from um, the history of the gold rush. Now, California, um, the whole reason people came out to California was back in 1849. Um, there was what was known as the gold rush. Um, so people basically from the eastern United States and even places in Europe and stuff came over to California to uh, hunt for gold because there was apparently signs of gold. Now, there wasn't actually that many gold, that much gold as you think there would be, but there was gold. And so people um, came out to California in 1849 to hunt, hunt for gold, came out in the search for gold. Um, and so those people were known as 49ers because it was 1849. Uh, they were known as 49ers. So they named the team the San Francisco 49ers. Now they were actually founded in 1946, not 49, but it's they're based on 1849. And those guys were called 49ers, the gold people. So that's why the team's called the 49ers. And now for the very last team that we're going to be going through today, the last team in the NFL, the Seattle Seahawks. Now the Seahawks were founded in 1976. Well, they were it was a name contest. Yeah, I'm sorry, but just very creative, I know. Well, they I didn't take creative. Well, yeah, very, very. I don't know who would have saw that one coming. But um, the Seahawks won. Um, but I think the Seahawk was a pretty good animal to choose. They chose it because it was a fierce bird, um, and it also fit well with the city name. The city name is Seattle Seahawks. Seattle Seahawks. It just kind of flows pretty well. So that's why they're called the Seahawks. All right. So that is all 32 teams in the National Football League. How their team names got started. Uh, if there's something that I missed or if there's something you want to comment on in the history of one of these teens, let me know down in the comments below. And this was a pretty interesting video. It was really fun to make. If you guys would like to see me do this for other um, sports, such as the uh, uh, MLB teams or maybe NBA teams or something like that, uh, do let me know because this was a pretty interesting video and to learn the history about each of the NFL teams. Uh, let me know what you guys think. So be sure to comment, like, subscribe. Like I said, some of these made no sense. Some of them made pretty good sense. Um, pretty interesting. Uh, overall. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Be sure to comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Wah!